So I have an important update in the current assault weapon ban challenge that is up for Supreme Court review. So let's talk about what is happening. Now, really quick before we jump into this video, I wanna ask you all for a huge favor. Looking at some of my analytics, about 60% of all of my viewers are actually not subscribed to the channel. And also right now, YouTube is doing a ton of shadow banning and a lot of throttling and unsubscribing people without them knowing. So if you wanna support the channel, a great way to do that is simply subscribing and then also just go back and check to see if you've missed some of my videos because YouTube is not giving it to you. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, in this video, we're gonna be talking about how an assault weapon ban case is currently seeking Supreme Court review. And during this next term, the Supreme Court is going to have to address whether or not they're going to grant review to this type of issue. In this video, we're going to be discussing the Maryland assault weapon ban challenge known as Bianchi versus Brown. And currently it's been renamed as Snope versus Brown. We recently received a ton of amicus briefs in the Supreme Court supporting that the Supreme Court should in fact grant review to this issue. Recently, we talked about how 29 states joined together to request that the Supreme Court actually review what the Fourth Circuit said down below. Now, you may recall that the Fourth Circuit issued an en banc panel decision, which upheld the state of Maryland's ban on so-called assault weapons. The Fourth Circuit en banc panel stuck to the position that semi-automatic rifles like the AR-15s are useful in military service, that they are militaristic weapons that can be regulated by a state like Maryland because they claim they are dangerous and unusual. Now, like I mentioned, we had an amicus brief from 29 states joining together to petition the Supreme Court to grant review to this issue. And now you have multiple two-way organizations who have also filed amicus briefs to the Supreme Court asking for them to grant review to this issue. Now, for those curious, there have been a ton of briefs filed by various organizations like GOA, NAGR, ANJRPC, uh, knife rights organizations, and many other organizations have filed for Supreme Court review of this issue. And so they're adding support to the plaintiffs and saying that Supreme Court finally needs to address this rifle ban issue, these magazine ban issues, and also address the outright defiance that's going on in lower courts like the Fourth Circuit. Now, for those not aware, the state of Maryland identifies certain rifles as so-called assault weapons. Maryland bans the sale, transfer, and possession of these semi-automatic centerfire rifles that have various characteristics, and they define those rifles to be so-called assault weapons. Now, this ban was challenged in Maryland in a federal district court, and in the complaint, the plaintiffs had to say that their Second Amendment lawsuit and their claim that they brought was essentially foreclosed that they couldn't bring it because of a prior Fourth Circuit decision, which kind of closed this issue. A prior case called Colby already challenged the Maryland assault weapon ban. And in that Colby case, the en banc panel in the Fourth Circuit had already upheld the Maryland rifle ban and said that it was constitutional. That Fourth Circuit en banc panel in Colby said that these rifles are outside the protection of the Second Amendment because the Fourth Circuit claimed they're useful in military service. Now, this case, Snope had to concede that Colby was the controlling precedent in the Fourth Circuit, but the plaintiffs in Snope said that that analysis prior in Colby was simply incorrect and should be reversed. Now, the district court in reviewing this case, Snope ultimately ended up dismissing the lawsuit. That dismissal was then appealed up to the Fourth Circuit, and the Fourth Circuit once again upheld that dismissal, saying that the plaintiffs here in Snope could not bring the lawsuit based on what already happened in Colby. Then this case went to the Supreme Court for the first time back in 2022, seeking review from the Supreme Court on this very issue. Now, the Supreme Court ultimately did rule in a different two-way case, the landmark case, Bruin. That was a 6-3 decision upholding our analysis and upholding our view of the Second Amendment, finding that text, history, and tradition is the correct approach when you're looking at these type of two-way cases. Now, after issuing that ruling, the Supreme Court then issued a GVR in the Snopes case. So they granted, vacated, and remanded what the Fourth Circuit said back down to the Fourth Circuit and told them to reconsider the Snopes case in light of what they said in Bruin. This case was then opened back up in the Fourth Circuit, and the Fourth Circuit three-judge panel held oral arguments back in December of 2022, but then the case sat pretty much silent for 13 months. And what ended up happening is the Fourth Circuit en banc panel then took the case out of the hands of the three-judge panel and said that they were going to rule on this on their own. And they did that because they knew the three-judge panel that was reviewing this issue in the Fourth Circuit that they were going to issue a pro to a decision and the Fourth Circuit en banc panel did not want that. So they took the case back into their own hands. And what they did is they did issue their decision and shocker to everybody, the Fourth Circuit en banc panel once again upheld the Maryland rifle ban, finding that these items were militaristic, that they were useful in military service. And also they found that the Bruin decision that was just issued did not impact the prior decisions in Colby or any of the decisions at all. 
In that decision, the majority of the Fourth Circuit stated that the assault weapons at issue fall outside the ambit of protection offered by the Second Amendment because, in essence, they are military-style weapons designed for sustained combat operations that are ill-suited and disproportionate to the need for self-defense. Moreover, the Maryland law fits comfortably within our nation's tradition of firearms regulation. It is but another example of a state regulating excessively dangerous weapons once their incompatibility with a lawful and safe society becomes apparent, while nonetheless preserving avenues for armed self-defense. Now, there were some dissents in the Fourth Circuit in the en banc panel. There were judges like Judges Richardson, Niemeyer, Aggie, Quattlebaum, and Rushing, who all agreed that their colleagues in the Fourth Circuit were just outright defying the Supreme Court. Their dissent states that after the Supreme Court decided Bruin, it remained this case for us to determine whether Maryland's assault weapons ban violates the Second Amendment. Yet before the panel could issue its opinion, our court voted to take the case en banc. Now the majority decides that Maryland's ban is perfectly consistent with the Second Amendment, but the majority's rationale disregards the Second Amendment and controlling precedent. Rather than considering the amendment's plain text, the majority sidesteps it altogether and concocts a threshold inquiry divorced from the right's historic scope. To make matters even worse, it then misconstrues the nature of the banned weapons to demean their lawful functions and exaggerate their unlawful uses. Now, after that terrible Fourth Circuit decision, there was then a clear path for the plaintiffs here to go to the Supreme Court, seek a petition for a writ of cert for Supreme Court review, and this is a final merits case. It's a final merits issue on rifle bans and magazine bans that the Supreme Court has been asking for for a while, and so now finally they have the perfect case teed up to them, submitted to them, and asking for a Supreme Court review. Now, like I mentioned in the prior video, we talked about the amicus brief that was filed by multiple states, including 29 states that joined together, asking for the Supreme Court to finally address this issue. And now we also have multiple two-way organizations that are doing the same thing. For example, in GOA's recent brief, they stated that the Second Amendment's two-step test used since 2010, used in Colby to circumvent Heller, in approving Maryland's ban on assault weapons was rejected in Bruin. The revised test used below allowed the court to circumvent Bruin to achieve the same result. They go on to say that the Fourth Circuit explained that their opinion was that the upshot is that the text of the Second Amendment, like the text of other constitutional provisions, must be interpreted against its historical and legal backdrop. The Fourth Circuit misrepresents the threshold inquiry of the Bruin test. No words such as historical and legal backdrop appear in Bruin and in that decision. Clearly, the plain text of the Second Amendment presumptively protects bearable firearms, which the Maryland law bans. If Maryland wants to defend its laws and rebut the presumption that the Second Amendment protects so-called assault weapons, it has the burden to demonstrate relevant historical analogs. But the Fourth Circuit should not be able to enable Maryland to evade that burden by shoehorning historical background into the plain text analysis, almost identically to what it did previously with the two-step approach that was included in the Colby decision. So in this brief and other briefs from other toy organizations, they walk through how there is absolute defiance going on right now. There's a bunch of legal shenanigans and analysis going on in circuit courts like the Fourth Circuit who are performing a weird analysis and just contorting Bruin however they can to uphold these types of rifle bans and magazine bans and other types of gun control. The Fourth Circuit clearly did not want to faithfully apply Bruin. They did not want a pro to a decision striking down this rifle ban and magazine ban. And that's also why they took it out of the hands of the three judge panel and decided to take this on bonk. Even their own colleagues in the Fourth Circuit called them out saying that's exactly what they were doing. They were going to try to manipulate the Bruin analysis to reach the conclusion that they wanted. And that's exactly what they did. And now you have the petitioners here, you have 29 states and a ton of other toy organizations that are joining together and saying that it's finally time for the Supreme Court to address this issue. So that's what's currently happening in this critical case that is asking for Supreme Court review in a challenge to a state's rifle ban and also addressing the outright defiance that's going on in some of these lower courts. If anything else develops, if any other additional things are filed, I will let you guys know. Also, if you like this video, and you would like to support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm, and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of 2A news. But as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, 
And never forget this nation was built by armed scholars and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.